March 19, 2024 meet special meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States and Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. Ms. Alcantara, are there any public comments? All right. Um, the board will now go into a closed meeting as authorized by the Texas Open Meetings Act under the Texas Government Code sections listed on our agenda. The board is back in open session. The time is now 6.03 p.m. Is there a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, personnel as discussed in closed session. I'll Th second. Thank you, Mr. Kirby and Dr. Fuller. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, Mr. Um, Dennison, abstain. That motion carries. Um, at this time, the special meeting is adjourned. I'd like to call the to order the March 19th, 2024 regular meeting. Please stand with me for the invocation and pledge of allegiance to the United States and Texas flags. Dr. Fuller will be saying our invocation. Thank you. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance and your wisdom. We ask that you watch over our town's best asset, our children. Help them to seek you in all things that they do. In this holiday season, we ask that you Help us draw closer to you and see your will in all things that we confront. We ask that you do all these in your son's holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. All right, Dr. Ruffin, do we have any special recognitions this evening? We do. so exciting to have all the students come and show off all the ways that they excel and all the interests that they have. Uh, it just makes our job, shows us um, that the decisions we're making affect those kids, and uh, I just love seeing all of that. Miss um, Alcantar, are there any public comments? All right. Um, moving on to consent agenda. Um, is anyone interested in pulling a consent agenda item? No? All right. If there's none, um, does anybody would have a motion? I'll motion to approve consent agenda as presented. Thank you, doc Dr. Fuller. Second from Mr. Wynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. All right. Moving on to action items. Uh, 6A, technology purchase over 50000 Dr. Ruffin. I feel like this is our monthly uh, <laughs> technology purchase over 50000 with so much, you know, construction and things happen with the bond. So go ahead, Ms. David, talk us through A and B, please. So action item A is for our three-year contract for our internet services and our WAN services. Um, this, it has to get, this goes through E-rate, which we get 60% back um, through the federal government. So this is kind of saving us a little bit of money because we're not having to pay for it outright. Um, it's a bare contract, so we'll prepay it, and then we will get it back in August, September when, they, when we submit all of our bills for the year. Um, this contract goes into effect July 1st, and since we are adding a new campus and we'll be adding the CTE building to this, um, I opted to do a five-year contract to save us a little bit of money on um, our monthly. The other piece of this is, is that it... Um, 
applies FCC fees to this. So right now our bill is roughly about $246,000. We're hoping that this drops it down a little bit, going to a five-year contract to save us money um, with those added FCC bills. So this is a E-rate approval for our Form 471 to use E-rate funds. All right, are there any questions? We don't, don't have enough to ask questions, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Okay, no questions. Um, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent of that. The action item is presented. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Porton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. But you're staying around, right? I am. I might be coming back because if you noticed for repairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, our action item B is for our Microsoft licensing. This is an annual renewal instead of a contract. Um, so this is a purchase. Actually, it went down this year because Microsoft restructured their licensing once again. Um, so it is a little bit cheaper, but we are adding Teams calling to this. So that way our administrators can call from their cell phones. Um, and it doesn't actually show up their cell phone number. So it actually shows up a, a district number. Um, and so that's just the added cost, but it did go down in funds okay. overall. Any questions? No questions? All right. Um, is there a motion to approve the technology purchase over 50000 for Microsoft Software Licensing Subscription Agreement? I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of Microsoft License Subscription Agreement from SHI. Thank you, Ms. Porton. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Wynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Moving on to 6C, guaranteed maximum price number two for package D for Montgomery High School renovations. Dr. Ruffin? Mr. Lynn. Yeah. Good evening. Um, we have been working diligently mm -hmm. um, with uh, Mr. Hollander and his team. Uh, along with PBK Architects on the design for the renovations to Montgomery High School. Uh, Stuart Builders, the contractor, has completed the um, bidding process, and so we're here tonight to ask you to approve the guaranteed maximum price. Um, so in your board packet, you see that the uh, base bid came in at $21.2 million, just a little bit over that, and then um, there are some alternates listed in there, and we are recommending that you uh, approve alternates one, three, and four, uh, which total an additional $4.8 million, um, bringing the total guaranteed maximum price uh, to $26,169,718. Um, and Dr. Fuller, to answer your question, um, <laughs> with the comparability funds that were set aside with the bond, as well as the funds for the Montgomery High School renovation project, we will be within budget. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. I have no other questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any questions? No? All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the guaranteed maximum price number two for package D MHS renovations? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Is there a second? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kirby. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Lynn. Moving on to information items, athletic department update. Coach Hurts here to give us our annual update on the athletic department. Well, um, I always uh, love to talk about uh, Montgomery ISD athletics. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, we've excelled at throughout the years. My 30th year here and uh, you know, one thing that's always been very important to me is to be proud of who I work for and who I work with. And I can say in my 30 years, that's always been a uh, constant in, in my professional life. Uh, I appreciate y'all letting me uh, talk to you about what we do in Montgomery ISD Athletic. You'll see the first, our mission and philosophy, dynamic athletic department, we feel like very important <clears throat> for student athletes and the students' development, their educational development. You know, we're very focused on creating positive habits and attitudes 
we feel like we function as an uh, uh, integral part of the total curriculum for our, uh, for our schools. Uh, we develop positive relationships, self-confidence, and servant leadership, uh, the latter being something that I really think our coaching staff does a great job at working with our, our young men and women. And of course, we always, in, in, in Montgomery ISD athletics, there's students first and there's athletes second. That's a non-negotiable thing with us. Uh, we tell our coaches, your teachers first, your coaches second. That's just the way it is. You know, if you come to work here, everything's in the brochure, now let's get down to it. Uh, at each high school, we offer 18 sports with 43 teams. About 45.3% of our student body participates in, in a, with our athletic groups. At the junior high, we offer 14 sports, 36 teams, and about 44.8 uh, participate. Please bear in mind that there are only two sports that the kids choose us. That's football and track. Everything else, we choose you. It's that way. It's, it's kind of gone that way. It's in most schools like that. But uh, we're very proud that we try to keep the maximum amount of kids that we can in our athletic programs. Uh, academic achievement, again, they're student first. We had 123 student athletes receive academic all district. We had 31 uh, students receive uh, academic all state. Very proud of that. We're just as proud of that as we are of the kids that we had all state. I wanted to touch on one thing. You know, we're talking about positive relationships servant leadership. Both our football programs were nominated by the Houston chapter of officials, that's saying something, for the sportsmanship award. And I, I want a big shout out to both Grant and uh, Pat uh, for, you know, conducting themselves in a manner that would have both our schools headed to the, uh, going to the Houston Touchdown uh, Club award ceremonies for sportsmanship. Uh, we're good sports. Now we'll knock your block off. We're going to fight. We're going to compete. You know that, that, that you know we're going to get after it. But you know we know how to handle it and 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 how to stay within the rules. And I compliment both those teams uh, for receiving a finalist award. Uh, some of the achievements I have to talk about our achievements. Uh, MHS volleyball uh, reached the uh, regional tournament this year. It was very satisfying. Story champion at MHS graduate. Uh, Lam, she came to us two years ago. She's done a phenomenal job. Matter of fact, we played Brenham in the playoffs, and it kind of harkened me back to the days. Again, I've been here a long time. Everybody knows that of the old rivalry where we had to literally, you know, keep everybody in the stands. But it was always done in a, in, a, in the right way, in the spirit of sportsmanship. Both schools. I want to compliment Brenham also on that. It was a very exciting game, <clears throat> and I was very proud of of what those girls have done. Uh, our girls basketball team qualified for the playoffs. Uh, I want to compliment Coach Savoy. Uh, you know, he came to us. We were struggling. I knew he was the guy, uh, he, MHS graduate, by the way. And, uh, and he has really built that culture and that program and has really got them on par as one of the top teams in the state. Very proud of him. Uh, Gretchen Murray, another MHS graduate. Uh, team tennis uh, qualified for the uh, state playoffs. Again, Gretchen came in. Uh, we were struggling there. Uh, she has really grown as a coach. I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of Brandy Chapman and Wilkinson, I'm sorry, Wilkinson, and uh, Grant Cooper for helping her develop, along with uh, Noah's uh, campus administration, developing such a fine coach. And then our MH MHS swim team qualified four swimmers to go to the uh, state swim and dive meet. Uh, achievements over at Lake Creek, uh, Lake Creek Volleyball uh, reached the area round in the playoffs, lost the <coughs> tough game, really thought they were going to do that. James Maurer uh, led our team tennis to District 25 uh, a championship and reached the quarterfinals for the second year row. James does a wonderful job, one of the best people you'll, you'll ever meet. Our uh, Lake Creek boys and girls, Kevin Spruill, I call him the Pied Piper of uh, cross country and track. He does such a phenomenal job recruiting, keeping the kids in the program, developing them. Uh, reached the, both teams reached the regional meet and they had two runners qualified for state. And for the second year in a row, our Lake Creek football team went 12 and one, your district champion and reached the state regional round and they lost a heartbreaker to eventual state champion, Port Nature's Grove who happens to be in our district for the next two years. So that should be a great district football game uh, to go to. 
Uh, Scott Peake, in his first year, did something for the first time at Lake Creek High School, won the district championship. Very proud of him. Uh, took a team that uh, really gelled. Uh, they really played hard. I was very proud of them. Sarah Simmons uh, won the district championship and reached the quarterfinal round. I really thought she was going to make that regional tournament. I mean, I was, man, I could just feel it. But they lost a tough one. Uh, Lake Creek swim uh, reached the uh, uh, state tournament, sent 12 swimmers, two divers, and Julie Moon is the class 5A female state champion diver who did a phenomenal job. You know, they, it's a split into two things, and they stop the swim meet, and everybody focuses over there at the diving pool, and she just nailed it. I mean, she had five dives, dives and she just, you know, it's really neat to see a, a, a young person have that opportunity, seize it, and excel in it. You know, that, I tell people all the time, that's why most of us get into coaching, you know, for that moment. And I'm so proud of her. And, of course, we had Coach Kennedy in football, Coach Simmons in girls basketball, and Coach Peake in boys basketball. We're all selected uh, District 25A Coach of the Year. Uh, as of March 2024, there are 33 MIS MISD student-athletes that will continue into college, their academic and their athletic career. I think it's an excellent return on our investment. Uh, I think uh, we do an outstanding job of investing in the things to help our kids be the best player that God gave them the talent for, maybe a little bit more. And our coaches do a great job. Uh, school safety, uh, most people don't realize that. We host 745 events in about 170 days. So if you do the math, we're hosting four to five events just about every week, or 10, actually. Working with Chief and the MISD Police Department, which I cannot tell you what a great job they do. I mean, they are fantastic. And we don't have many problems. When we do, they are there. And uh, it is such a joy to work with them. Uh, and I, can, I have to shout out to our campus administration. I'm not going to name the APs, but our four principals, uh, Ms. Chapman, Mr. Whitehead, uh, Ms. Williams, and Noah, and Mr. Hollander, fantastic. They are so good. We are truly a, a partnership in making sure that that our kids act right, that our stands act right, and that, the, that, that we're ready to go. And I, I just can't tell you what a wonderful thing it is for an athletic director to work with these fine professionals. And then of course we do uh, are continuing to inform our parents and students that we have a zero tolerance policy for regarding hazing and bullying. In partnership with finance, Ben, where are you, money man? That's my guy right here. Uh, they have really helped us as far as improving the accounting processes for the funds. You know, 745 events, you know, believe it or not, that's a pretty fair piece of change. I know Ben wants me to get more in there, and we're trying. But anyway, it's been wonderful. He's done a great job with me, helping me forecast for our future uh, budgets. Uh, I have regular meetings. You know, I talk to Joe more than he really wants me to talk to him. Uh, head of maintenance and Spencer Ferguson, my head of uh, athletic maintenance guy. We are constantly going over our grounds, making sure they're well kept, they're you know well monitored, and then of course campus athletic administration, my campus athletic coordinators. I'm always meeting with them, making sure that we're following our financial policies as set by by Ben and, and his department. Uh, as far as human capital, you know I have a lot of intentional messages. I'm not a big formal send this out kind of guy. Uh, I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations you know, a lot of those things, and, and continuing to ensure that we have a culture like it's always been here through my tenure as a coach and athletic director. This is a place where a coach wants to go. We've got great kids, we've got great coaches, we have great campus administration, we get great support from central office. This is a place where you want to go and raise your family. Again, all three of my kids are Montgomery High School graduates. Can't think of a better place you would want to raise a family and uh, that is something that we are continually working on. That's a day-by-day -day process. And, uh, and then, of course, I meet with them to talk about the status of our staff. You know, this is a human capital game. People get unhappy. People get their feelings hurt. People don't understand. Our job is to make them understand that, hey, we're here for you. We're supporting you. Can't say yes all the time, but we're here for you. Uh, communication and service, we really work hard at providing you know, appropriate responses and timely responses to any questions that uh, that our community has. 
You know, a lot of people don't understand the UIL. A lot of coaches don't understand the UIL. They're hard to understand. They got a tough job. That's our job. We get out there and we make sure. The reason why we have to do things, this is why. Whether it's TEA, state law, or UIL, this is why we do the way we have to do it. So we, we are constantly, and I have to give a great shout out uh, to Lori Poland and Jill Shaw. I can't tell you, they deal with so much, and they are so good at what they do. Uh, I just, you know, I, I just can't keep enough praise on them. They just, they're tremendous. Because jo Joe Kennard, you know, Joe's great, been here a long time. We've got a great working re uh, relationship. We always see eye to eye on things. You know, who's going to pay for what, but, <laughs> but we always work it out. And then the last thing as far as communication, every head coach is required to have a preseason meeting. And this meeting is to lay out, this is the way it is. This is how we're going to act in the stand. This is what our kids are going to do. There's going to be conflict. Whether you like it or not, in athletics, there's going to be conflict. How are we going to resolve this conflict in the most humane and, and proper way? And this is things that, that we have to do. And then, of course, when our kids sometimes do make a mistake, we go over to extracurricular discipline code for it with them so they have a clear understanding walking into it. Hey, this is what it's kind of like when I coach baseball. Don't plan a spring break trip. We're going to play during spring break, so don't do it. And we're going to be in the playoffs, so don't, uh, don't schedule a trip in May because our goal is to get the state tournament. We're going to get there. So just block it out. Go sometime late in June. And that's what our coaches do a great job of communicating uh, with our parent group. So that's kind of an overview of what we do in athletics, and I will happily answer any questions to the best of my ability. Any questions? Which day? No. Nope. Okay. Tell me $2. For Chris. No <laughs> Thank you, Covered It. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so coach. much. All right. Well, I think we are to the end of our agenda. The time is now. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>